tell women all the time. We lose the tit for tat every time because you lose your senses and you do something stupid and you get pregnant. Yes, ma'am. You, why'd you feel like she was lying? She was trying to ruin the relationship that I was... that I had. Oh, you feel like she was trying to hang on to you by claiming that she was pregnant because you told her you were in love with somebody else. So you just created this. This letter is just a lie. Yes, ma'am. She's saying in court today, ma'am, Miss Watson, that this is not an official letter. This is something that she just wrote and typed up. And here we go, folks. The courtroom is buzzing as we dive into the drama of Murray versus Gerald Donaldson. Our man Jerome, the trusty bailiff, kicks things off with a tale of baby Anaya's mystery daddy. It's about to get spicy, so don't wander off. Miss Harris, you have been caught in a love triangle. There are two men in court today claiming to have fathered your 18-month-old daughter, Anaya, your current boyfriend, the plaintiff, Mr. Murray, and the defendant, your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Donaldson. They are both in court today to prove paternity. Boom! Ms. Harris spills the tea on her bumpy ride with Mr. Donaldson. She paints him as the guy who was all doubts from day one, pretty much leaving her to deal with the baby bumps alone. But wait for it, because she's just getting warmed up. From my understanding, we was dating. But then when I got pregnant, he told me he had feelings for another girl. He told me that he didn't want to be with me. So I was basically alone during my pregnancy. He was there during the baby shower and he came to the hospital with his mom. Here comes Mr. Donaldson, throwing shade all over the place. He thinks Ms. Harris was trying to tie him down with a baby story right as he had his eyes on someone else. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. You tell him you're pregnant. Yeah. And he accepts that you're pregnant and it's my baby. Well, he didn't believe I was pregnant. You didn't believe she was pregnant, Mr. Donaldson? Not at the beginning. You, why'd you feel like she was lying? She was trying to ruin the relationship that I was... that I had. Oh, you feel like she was trying to hang on to you by claiming that she was pregnant because you told her you were in love with somebody else. Hang on tight. Mr. Donaldson is riding the baby decision roller coaster like it's his job. Ms. Harris spills the beans on how it took a belly you couldn't miss for him to finally get the hint. Keep your eyes peeled because this baby daddy saga is twisting and turning like a pretzel. And so you say at some point he did accept that the baby was his? He had to when he seen that my belly was big. Oh, because you saying at first he didn't even believe it, so then when your stomach started growing... No, he brought me a pregnancy test. Oh, he did? All right. So you brought her a pregnancy test and said, prove it. Yeah. By that time, it was too late. She was, like, big. I hadn't seen her in so long. Just when you thought it was all about the parents, in swoops Mr. Donaldson's mom, totally clueless about possibly being a grandma. Imagine showing up to a family gathering and finding out you might be getting a grandkid. Could dinner get any more awkward? And your family has accepted the baby? Yes, but when all of this started, we just backed away from the whole situation because it was getting a little messy. At what point do you start having doubt? The thing that really changed my mind is when my mother went to pick the baby up and saw Fred. Mr. Murray, why do you you believe you could be the biological father of this child? One day I was on Facebook and I got a message and he told me that the baby could possibly be mine. Enter Mr. Murray, suddenly smack in the spotlight as possibly Anaya's real dad. Thanks to a sneaky tip-off from Mr. Donaldson, he's now rethinking his entire life. The tension is so thick you could cut it with a knife. Stay tuned because this suspense is just too good to miss. So you did sleep with Mr. Murray yes. while you were in the relationship with Mr. Donaldson? Yes. Let me try to understand all this. Mr. Murray, what do you remember? She was in a relationship with Mr. Donaldson at Correct. the time. But you all ended up having a sexual encounter during that time? Yes. But you say you used protection. You say you did not. Okay, that's how we get a paternity issue. Switch gears to detective mode. The courtroom's now a crime scene for love as everyone tries to piece together dates and flirty texts to nail down when exactly Anaya made her grand entrance plan. It's a tangled web of who kissed whom and when. Don't blink or you'll miss a clue. Do you remember when you were intimate with Mr. Donalds? The beginning of January, beginning of February, and the end of February, and then stop. So the beginning of January around here, the beginning of February with Mr. Donaldson? You said the end of February too? Yes, I did. All right, so the end of February. Now, prepare for a serious heart tug. Through all the chaos, Mr. Murray proves he's not just any guy. He stepped up as a father figure for Anaya, showing her the ropes and being there, no matter the gossip. The emotional meter's about to explode. Grab your tissues. This one's going to hit you right in the feels. Who's in her life as father? Who does she bond with as a father? Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. She looks to him like he's her father because he's been there ever since she was three months. And so what was it that made you decide to be a part of the baby's life, Mr. Murray? At that point in time, she was in like a down position. So I just took, took her and her in. I take care of both of you. 
And now, the moment of truth. The judge is ready to drop those DNA results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Murray, you are not the father. The courtroom buzzes with anticipation as Judge Lay calls the session to order. The case of Webster vs. Ware kicks off with some serious courtroom drama vibes. Judge Lay greets everyone, and Ron, the court clerk, is thanked for his help. The atmosphere is formal, but you can cut the tension with a knife as the session gets underway. Everyone's on the edge of their seats, ready for the courtroom action to unfold. This is the case of Webster v. Ware. Thank you, Ron. Good day, everyone. Ms. Webster, you recently learned shocking news that Myron Smith, the man you believe to be your dad, and who paid child support for you may not be your biological father. Now you've dragged the defendant, Mr. Ware, to paternity court to prove that he is your father. Ms. Webster throws down the gauntlet, ready to stir up some family secrets. She's dragged Mr. Ware to court to prove he's her dad. She's betting all her chips that today's DNA results will back her up. The tension in the courtroom climbs as the stakes of the DNA test are spelled out. Buckle up, because this emotional roller coaster is just getting started. Mr. Ware, you admit that you had a relationship with Ms. Webster's mother around the time of conception, but say for the past 40 years, you were told Mr. Smith was her father. So Ms. Webster, tell me why you now believe Mr. Ware is your father. Your Honor, I worked in a beauty salon with some of his relatives and they always kind of had something against me. Just when you think you've seen it all, a cousin throws in a curveball about chuckles. They suggest Ms. Webster shares a chuckle so unique with Mr. Ware that it could be a genetic giveaway. This lighthearted evidence adds a personal touch to the proceedings, blending humor with the family drama. The chuckle comparison unexpectedly becomes a key piece of the puzzle in this familial mystery. Let's see how this laughable evidence plays out. You chuckle like him. She said, if I close my eyes and you both chuckle, you would know the difference. Really? I had a baby book for a long time and I never really start putting things together until the blood, the blood type wasn't the same. And I'm looking in the baby book, relatives of Mr. Ware's family that signed in at when I was born, they bought gifts. Um, there was an address. Um, really? Mr. Ware steps up with a story that throws a wrench into the works. He shares his version of the relationship timeline with Ms. Webster's mother, explaining why he thinks he's not the dad. He details the geographical and timing challenges that make him doubt his paternity, introducing a dose of skepticism about the mother's story. Hold on to your hats, because this timeline tangle is about to get even more tangled. Because at the time when her mom and I were dating, she was in between two cities, Louisville, Kentucky, and Dayton, Ohio. She would spend months there and months here. When she became pregnant, she explained to me that she was and that it was another man's uh, child. Amidst the legal jargon, a spiritual twist turns the court into a scene straight out of a movie. A poignant moment unfolds as Ms. Webster recounts visiting Mr. Ware at his church, seeking divine signs about her paternity. This emotionally charged scene blends faith with her quest for truth, turning the courtroom into a backdrop for a spiritual revelation. The divine intervention moment will have you wondering what the heavens will reveal next. We went to visit him at his church. I knew who he was, but he didn't know who I was. I've just been praying, you know, that I find out who my father is. There's things in my life, there's roadblocks and stumbles I I've been going through, there's things that goes I'm achieving, and knowing who my father is is one of them. And I came to the Lord, I went to the altar, they had altar call, and I went up and I just prayed that God give me a sign to reveal. I'm praying and, and I'm nervous, but I just felt this energy. And when I, they asked for the prayer warriors to come out, Mr. Smith brings in the big guns with his military alibi, challenging the conception timeline like a pro. He testifies about his service days and the timeline of his relationship with Ms. Webster's mother, reinforcing his belief that he isn't the biological father. His military precision brings a strategic element to the case, emphasizing the importance of timing in this paternity puzzle. Gear up, because the plot is about to thicken. We're gonna go right up here to the witness stand. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Smith. As you know, we're here discussing the paternity as it relates to Ms. Webster. You have been paying child support. For yes, I have. But you don't believe you're her biological father. No, I don't. I can tell you why. Hold the phone. Here comes the DNA result no one saw coming. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Ware, you are not her father. Mm. <sighs> The courtroom drama kicks off with a bang. The episode opens with greetings and the announcement of the case, Martin vs. Pinner. The court is introduced to the participants, and the nature of the paternity dispute is briefly outlined. Everyone's on the edge of their seats already, and trust me, you'll want to buckle up for this ride. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Martin versus Pinner. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Ms. Martin, you admit to making a huge mistake around the time you conceived your daughter, Royal Blue. Yes, Your Honor. You claim that one moment of weakness will cost 
cost you your fiance if you cannot prove today that he fathered your child. The tension is thick enough to cut with a knife. Ms. Martin explains that her relationship with Mr. Pinner is hanging by a thread due to doubts about the paternity of their daughter, Royal Blue. Mr. Pinner expresses his love for the child, but indicates he will leave if the DNA test is negative. The stakes are sky high, and this emotional roller coaster is just getting started. Mr. Pinner, you say you love Royal Blue and want her to be yours, but you already have one foot outdoor and will leave Miss Martin if today's paternity results are negative. Ms. Martin, talk to me about the status of your relationship right now. What's going on? Just when you thought it couldn't get more tangled, a massive misunderstanding is revealed where Mr. Pinner accuses Ms. Martin of only telling him about her infidelity after she discovered her pregnancy a month later, which Ms. Martin vehemently denies, claiming she told him the very next day. The plot thickens, and the next revelation will have you reeling. Oh, after she found out that she was pregnant a month later, she said, well, no. I have something to tell you. I had sex with somebody, I had a party, and I woke up, I know I don't know if I had unprotected sex or not. And I don't Romeo, really? really know. And I asked her, I said, who do you have sex with, blank man? How do you not know who you slept with? That's just I to me. I told you it was it's, drinking and everything. That's involved, irresponsible. But, that's but very you're irresponsible as a mother. I told you that you very did not next tell day. Me. No, you did. The plot thickens as they delve into the timing of the events. The judge asks about the timing of the sexual encounter in relation to the conception date of their child, Royal Blue. Both agree that the dates closely coincide, adding to Mr. Pinner's uncertainty about his paternity. Just when you think you've heard it all, the drama escalates even further. And when you think of the window of conception, does this incident fall near that window? Yes, yes ma'am. I had sex with Romeo probably two days after the fact that I told him that, and it all falls in about the same time. How soon after that was Royal Blue born? She was born June 19th of 2015. Conception day was about October the 15th. That's what the doctor gave me, which I told him I've shared every information. So oh, if the doctor the told you the conception date was October 15th, what date was the party? 13th, maybe? Can you feel the courtroom buzzing? Judge Lake dives into the messy consequences of the tit-for-tat behavior between the couple, emphasizing how such actions lead to compounded mistakes and heightened resentment. Her words cut deep, and as the tension mounts, prepare for an explosive turn of events. She moves to a different state, following behind you. When she gets there, you still out and about doing things. Then she get mad and get upset and decide, you know what, now I'm gonna try to go tit-for-tat. He out partying, he out hanging out, I'll start partying. We hear this too much. Now, thing I tell women all the time. We lose the tit for tat every time because you lose your senses and you do something stupid and you get pregnant. Yes, ma'am. Everyone holds their breath for this one. The tension reaches a peak as both parties await the DNA results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Pinner, you are the father. Ooh. Oh, boy. Hold on to your hats because we're just getting started in the courtroom. The judge lays down the law with a you may be seated and bam, we're off. The Booman vs. Booman showdown is on the agenda and it promises to be nothing short of a circus. So fasten your seatbelts. Ms. Bowman, you've dragged your daughter Kalina to court to save your relationship. You admit after years of deception and confusion, you now must prove to her that her actual biological father is Mr. James Stewart who passed away 18 years ago. Ms. Kalina, Lena Bone, you say your mother's paternity lies have jeopardized your relationship and you don't believe her latest claim that Mr. Stewart is your father. Yes, Your Honor. Angela kicks things off by spilling the beans on her love life saga. Picture this, a love triangle with Mr. Stewart and Mr. Watson, complete with heartbreaks, backstabs, and a baby mystery that could rival any daytime drama. The details are as twisted as a roller coaster. Can the court straighten this mess out? Stay tuned. I used to be real close to her and now it feels like I've literally tore it completely apart. I need to prove to her that her father is James Stewart. You say over the years you've lied to her. I've told her that another Mr. Watson was her father. Explain. Um, it all started when she was little. When I was when I first met Mr. Stewart, I was met him at a company that I worked with, and we started working, became friends, and everything real close. We became sexual. It got to where I found out there was somebody else. Up next, Kalina steps into the spotlight, getting real about how her mom's fibs have turned their relationship into a minefield. She's laying it all out there, and the vibe is tenser than a final exam. Brace yourselves, we're diving deeper into the drama. It's been hard because the simple fact, I don't know when she's lying or telling the truth anymore. And so she told you another man was your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. And you believed all these years Mr. Watson was your biological father. So when did you find out that he was not? I found that 
out during the summer going into high school that he was not my father. Now, here comes James Stewart Jr. like a knight in shining armor, ready to defend his dad's honor. He's loaded with a timeline and facts that might just debunk Angela's story. Is he the family's Sherlock Holmes? Let's find out what he's got up his sleeve. And then when I was able to go back around that day, she was like, oh, he might not be your father and it's a possibility that James Stewart is your father. And I was confused because all these years you told me that Mr. Watson was my father. Then when we went to go take the test, when the test results finally came back and didn't know what to think and I read the results even though she told me not to. But Angela isn't backing down. She fires back, adamant that James Sr. was in the picture when Kalena was cooking in the oven. The air is thick with tension as her stories collide. Who's the daddy? The courtroom is itching for the truth. You claimed in your testimony that you were working with Mr. Stewart's father at this place when Kalena was conceived. So your assertion, Mr. Stewart, is that that doesn't add up. Doesn't add up to me. It really doesn't. Because your father quit this job in 1994. That's actually Early a lie because he actually stopped working at that restaurant in February of 95. He would come in, do a shift or whatever. Then there was times that he wouldn't come in because he was a manager. He had me. I was right up under him as an assistant manager. Just when you think you've seen it all, Angela drops a bombshell. She faked a paternity test to keep Mr. Watson around. The crowd's jaws hit the floor. The drama meter is off the charts. What next? A twist in the DNA tale? In Miss Watson's mailbox, Miss Bowman? Yes, I did. I did it because at the time, Mr. Watson, when I got back in a relationship with him, we sat there, we talked and everything. It was all discussed out. What, what do this you mean is it when was I discussed? Talk, it was discussed that Kalina was his daughter. So you just created this. This letter is just a lie. Yes, ma'am. She's saying in court today, ma'am, Miss Watson, that this is not an official letter. This is something that she just wrote and typed up. It's D-Day in the courtroom DNA result day. That James Stewart and Kalina Bowman are related. It's <laughs> <laughs>